Good morning and hood morning America. This is your host, Dr. Champ, coming to you this morning from my humble abode. I just want to say good morning, and I love all of you, and I hope all of you have the best day ever. I have some really cool, exciting stuff. This is like Christmas mucho grande kind of information coming to you here in just a minute. Uh, I can't wait to share that, but first, and of course, first thing in the morning, get your Bible out. Um, also had some people tell me, or a person tell me over the weekend that um, he's speaking about Jesus and me standing up for America and uh, things that can do to help everybody that 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 makes people mad. So I just want to say good. I'm glad the devils that are living inside of my uh, friends are mad about that because I'm going to keep driving because this message, what you're about to hear, defies those lies that God doesn't exist. It defies the lies that helping others doesn't work and it defies the lies that that. Jesus sitting there for you. But it also points out the truth, same thing as in the story of the Good Samaritan, that priests will walk by, the religious will walk by, but every once in a while you'll find a Good Samaritan. And let's see what Jesus thinks about the Good Samaritan. Here we go, Matthew 25, 31. This says, the Son of Man will judge the nation. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and the holy angels with him, he will sit on the excuse me, he will sit on the throne of his glory all the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate them one from another as a shepherd divides his sheep from the goats sheep going over here goats going over there and he will set the sheep on his right hand which the right hand, he keeps always talking about the right hand. The right hand, fish on the right side. What's on the right side of the brain? Love. What's on the right side of the Bible? Love, mercy, forgiveness, redemption, heaven, eternal life. And he will set the sheep on his right hand, but the goat's on his left. Then the, what sits on the left hand? Judgment, criticism, um, dominance, arrogance, all of that. Then the king will say to those on his right hand, Come, you blessed of my father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. Then the righteous will never uh, then the righteous will answer him saying, "Lord, when did you when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you drink? When did we see you a stranger and take you in or naked and clothe you? Or when did we see you sick or in prison or come to you?" And the king will answer and say to them, "Assuredly, I say to you, in so much as you did it to for one of the least of these, my brethren, you did it for me. So there's a couple things that Jesus is saying here. They're like, Jesus, we didn't have to give you anything. And Jesus is saying, wait a minute, I live inside of you. And first of all, my question to the disciples were, why hadn't you given Jesus stuff? Why didn't you see him as a stranger to the world? Why hadn't you stepped out there to do this? So the same thing that happened to Jesus is what's happening to the least of these here in America and around the world. So, all right, back to this. Then he will also say to those in his left hand, depart from me, you cursed, into the everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger and you did not take me in. N uh, naked and you did not clothe me. Sick in prison and you did not visit me. Jesus says you're going to the firing burns of hell and your angels are going there with you. So you might want to start helping people. Jesus tends to think that's a good idea. And yes, I wake up with hair like this. Jesus loves my hair, I know. All right, back to the Bible. Moments of Holy Spirit glory. All right. Then they will also answer him saying, Lord, what... When did we see you hungry? So again, they're asking him again, or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or a person, and did not minister to you. Then he will answer saying, Assuredly, I say to you, in so much as you do it for one of the least 
of these, you did it for me. And those will go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. And then right after that, it's the plot to kill Jesus. <laughs> so he knew his time was coming. And he wanted people to know one thing. That he came to teach us one thing. Everybody's like, oh, I got my ticket to heaven. Yeah, but you need two tickets to paradise. And that's what Jesus is trying to say, that he lives in us once he came. Knuckleheads. Knuckleheads. Knock, 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 knuckleheads. What have you done? You clothe the person that needed it? You feeding people that are hungry? You giving thirsty people something to drink? You visiting people in prison? Are you loving your brothers? Or are you judging them? Are you accusing them, being like, well, we went to church. Oh, we go to church every week. Oh, we're in Bible studies. Oh, we shooed people out. Oh, we ignored that person over there. Oh, we didn't help that blue-eyed, super-haired genius over there. You know, I mean, so what's up? Here's what's up. Jesus loves us, and he'll work through the Good Samaritans instead. So yesterday I was in line at church at Free Chapel, best church on the planet. A lot of great men and women in there. And the bad, America's preacher... Pastor Jensen Franklin, thank you, sir, for being that, that star in my life that I lean on, that I gain strength from. That even if we were to disagree on a subject matter, your strength fires mine up and reminds me to stay strong. So I met a gentleman in line yesterday who had a calling from the Holy Spirit to come all the way from Detroit. And God knows that, um, that I have some burns from a fire he sent me into um, not too long ago. And with that comes a lot of what you just heard in that book right there. And Jesus was right. People don't want to clothe you. People don't want to feed you. People don't want to give you drink, especially the very religious. So here's what happened. I met someone in line. He had a need, um, but he had a message to, you know, to, to come and, and to, to share and to visit and to learn. And so, I mean, imagine leaving Detroit with, no, with hardly any money, but wanting to come see Pastor Franklin coming to Free Chapel, a black man from Detroit, and not having much with you. That's a courageous, courageous. Two, what comes to find out used to be, um, Gain I guess Gainesville, Georgia, used to be very racist. Um, so um, I guess that's still scary for African-American black men and women in this country, although Free Chapel's full of black men and women. So don't be scared. Come on in. Uh, but see, here's what happened. Uh, I brought him back. He's on a fast. He didn't want to eat, but brought him to a lunch at the marina. And then I brought him down to my boat, got him some clothes, got him some shoes, gave him my only leather jacket, black leather jacket, and pair of pants. But that's all he would, oh, book bag, a few, few items. But that's all he would accept. Very humble, very humble man. So after I, I got him a hotel, which I can't afford too much, uh, but got him a hotel and, and did what Jesus told us to do. Clothes, gave him some. Sick, gave him items. Uh, thirsty. Got him something to drink. Hungry. He didn't want food because he's on a fast, but I tried. Um, all the things that that says to do. So I dropped him off at a hotel. Um, if anybody hears this message, we could use some help. And he's not asking for help. He's not a beggar by any means. He almost hates taking help. I'm having to preach to him about accepting because even Jesus accepted gifts. But on my way, after I dropped him off, listen up. You're not going to believe these miracles. This is Christmas, Jesus, Holy Spirit, the Good Samaritan, and not many of you. But you need to get on this Jesus train that, that goes like this. So I gave away a few items of clothes. I wanted to give him more, but he wouldn't accept more. He's not here for more, okay? That's not what he's here for. So what happened to me is I came back home. I was going to go to another Bible study last night, and my neighbor came down. It was her birthday. She had had a few... Uh, uh, glasses of wine we'll say for her birthday a friend bought her a few she was in a good mood she saw a bible in my hand she started telling me about she has a bible with big words and that uh jesus's words are in red and she reads it every day and we talked about what a beautiful book it was and then i'm late for bible study and so i'm like how do i handle this because i'm being sweet to my neighbor you know love thy neighbor right it is what it says and i'm like no you got to show attention to your neighbor and i'm going to go into some religious thing hurrying up not loving your neighbor who's standing there loving you so i'm like let's show her some time she's like i have some gifts for you and so again the the idea that that maybe maybe i need to uh you know maybe put that off someone trying to give me gifts sometimes it's hard to accept gifts 
And no, and even though I do have some needs, I've lost a bunch of weight by walking and dedicating myself and uh, eating better and fasting and all sorts of things. So none of my pants fit anymore. And I haven't had a chance to re restyle my wardrobe in a long time. Uh, so I've been living on just hair alone, you know, but that is pretty radical. <laughs> so she's like, I have some gifts for you up in my car. I'm like, gifts? All right. I, let's not stop a blesser. Don't stop somebody that likes to bless people. So you're not going to believe what happened. She gave me one, two, three, four, five designer pairs of blue jeans that happened to be my exact size, which came from her son-in-law and daughter, Brian and Lindsay Bloomfield, I believe. I've never even met, met these people. I love you all so much. You have no idea how much that touched my heart and how, like, I, I'm an encourager, I'm an uplifter. And, and if you only knew how much it touched my heart that you did that for a stranger who you've never met based on your mother and mother-in-law's care for her neighbor, and not only did they do that, but look at this. All designer tees, stuff that is exactly my style. Stuff that I haven't even been asking God for. And they're blessing me like that. And you don't believe in God. Yeah, I get it. Now, Christians, listen up. I have a friend. We'll leave the name unsaid. But a couple of summers ago, I, I helped talk this friend into believing in Jesus. And a few nights ago on Saturday night, I got to speak to him. And now he doesn't believe at all. He doesn't believe at all. He wants to know, where was Jesus? Where were the people that I go cheer for in my life? Where were the people that I stand up for daily in my life? Where were these people that I give money to at the church in my life? And where was God when I needed Him? But without the whole story, you can't really know. So, there's one more thing. I had one black leather jacket when I got. I gave it away. One hour later. <sighs> Step it up. Step it up. Christian, you're not doing near enough. To those that helped me and showed me love, thank you so much. For those that are praying and behind the scenes, I love you and thank you. And um, to all those that are out there that protect us and, you know, have the tough jobs, I love you too. We got to have more love for one another. If not, there's a fiery place in hell that Jesus is going to hold you in his left hand. And you and your angels are going to burn up. It doesn't matter how many times you go to church. If you don't do what Jesus tells you to do, you might be in his hands, but you're going to be in the left one. I plan on being in the right one. I love you. Help somebody today. Show some love. We're filthy rich in America. And all we want to do is accuse everybody from the lowest to the highest. From anybody that walks into the church trying to start a new life. You know what it's all about. To our president on the very top. Everybody attacks you. What are we, a bunch of savages? What are we, witches? This good, good Samaritan is going to keep walking in the Holy Spirit. God bless you. Thanks for listening. Have a great day. Say a prayer for me. I'm doing great, but I could use a few, a few more things. A few more friends. A few more people. I can't wait to help everybody that I can. I can't wait to share these messages. I love you all so much. From my humble abode. This is Champ. Champ Vinci. I love you.